promised to post about every month and tighten that down to weekly as soon as I could. My last post was six months ago now. <laughs> so I probably ought to talk about that a little. This will be my first post about psychology. Please remember that I am not any kind of doctor. I'll just tell you what's happened to me, what my doctors have told me, and maybe what I've read and why I chose to read that. I will commit to posting much more often than this six-month break. Right now, I plan on posting something every two weeks, even if it's just a monologue with very little editing, just to let you know where I'm at. But I have nearly a terabyte of video that needs to be edited in his stories and posted. It's just a question of priority and, to a certain extent, emotional capability. Since I live in an isolated boatyard in the middle of a swamp over half a mile from the nearest remote neighborhood of this little backwoods town of Almirante, COVID-19 really hasn't affected me that much. The changes are significant, but their effects are only subtle for me, unlike most of you who've lost jobs and are literally confined to your apartments and homes. I'll cover my isolation in the next video. So, what happened in November? First, you need to know that I suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder and the resulting depression. I was diagnosed a year ago, shortly before coming to Panama. But until coming down here, I've been in therapy since 2015. If you saw my last post, you know I made a trip to Costa Rica and took a tour of a boat factory. Well, the boat I had decided to buy was a bust. They gave me great discounted, deeply discounted prices while I was there. About $3,400 for a nice heavy rib with a little console. It took forever to get the formal email. And two months later, it came with prices that had nearly doubled to $6,100 for the same boat. Plus another $1,000 for Panamanian customers. While this may be a reasonable price for a rib like that, it was now way outside of my budget. In November, I had to make a trip to Medellin, Colombia to refill my prescriptions. The trip went fine, but for some reason, which as is typical, I don't understand, I shut down when I got back. I didn't get anything done for more than two months. Since February, I've been gaining on the depression and getting back to work, as if the blood is slowly returning to my brain. So what is PTSD? And I'm basing this all on a book called The Body Keeps the Score by Dr. Bessel van der Kolk, who's the director of, of the National Complex Trauma Treatment Network, just one of his many titles in the psychiatric community. I chose this book because first, I'm isolated and with very little medical coverage at the moment, so I can't talk to my doctor as I want to. So I'm left to DIY what I can. Second, I was just diagnosed with PTSD after struggling with the symptoms for so long. I wanted to read the best I could find, and third, this book seemed to be that. But I'll cover this with my doctor as soon as I can to make sure I got it right. You should do the same. Talk to your shrink. Having been through therapy for so long, I believe this is good advice for anyone. It turns out that when things happen, memories form immediately in your brain, all spread out in different parts. Then when you sleep, your mind sifts through it all saves the imagery that captures enough so that it can reform the emotions later when you want to remember and dumps the emotions. But when you're, when you're under terrible stress that you can't escape, 
like an assault or a terrible event or even something horrible that happens over a very long time but you, that you can't escape. Then your mind is focused so much on what to do when it can't fight or fly that it overwhelms your brain and the image parts of the memory may get all screwed up or not form at all. And the emotions that have been very temporarily stored in parts of your autonomic brain never get processed and removed. Your autonomic system isn't made to carry these terrible feelings long term. So your mind struggles full time to keep them where they are. This is exhausting to your subconscious. You feel it consciously, but don't know why you're exhausted. When from time to time something happens, maybe you just relax a moment or something, music, a smell, a flash of just the right color of light gives them a boost. They pop up, sometimes successfully associating with their imagery, sometimes not. But it is because they are so overwhelming that they are where they are. So these times when they resurface are always overwhelming. If they find their imagery or something similar in our memories, then we have what's called a dissociative event. We instantly get lost in the memory, unable to process what's going on around us. We freeze and remain frozen, drooling on ourselves, or even acting out in pantomime what's going on in our head until something breaks the spell, and hopefully no one saw that. If they don't find their imagery, they may attach themselves to something that's happening right now, something someone said or did that gets assigned the blame for what we're feeling, and we lash out. Luckily, that hasn't been the case for me, but I have many times woken up on a bus or on the subway and realizing after a moment where I was also realized that I had likely just been putting on a horror show for people around me. So I don't know for sure what happened in November. I probably never will. All I can do is try harder to focus. I was lucky this time. I came across the used dinghy at the other end of Panama that was perfect for my needs. An hour later, I was on the overnight bus to Panama City and then out to Cologne to buy it before it sold. Since then, it's been a life-saving project, something new, not easily associated with the depre depression. Hopefully when I finish it, I'll be able to roll my energy back into the escape TARDIS and start getting the help put back together. Only time will tell. Please subscribe, like, thumbs up, and help me get this channel moving again. In the meantime, fair winds from the Escape TARDIS.